Hello and welcome to the introduction to the Mini Ray 3000 from Ray Systems, including some basic user and functionality options. Uh, the first thing to always look at is the hydrophobic filter on the top of the instrument. Always make sure the instrument is in operation with a hydrophobic filter. Check the filter itself to make sure there's no sign of any contaminants, dust or humidity forming. If there is, take the filter off and replace it with a nice fresh new one. Also always check this Tigon tubing section to make sure there's uh, no contamination in that section of the line. Uh, Tigon can act like a sponge for VOCs. Uh, the important things to identify externally are the sounder on the left hand side of the instrument and the exhaust port on the right hand side of the instrument. Uh, you can also see the battery compartment is located on the rear of the instrument. The battery is removable, so simply unclip, clip back on when you want the in instrument to operate. So to start measurements, hold the mode button. You'll see the startup, a light, a quick sensor check. We can also see that there is a flashlight functionality. So you can see the flashlight turns on here. The instrument will start up and give you a reading live from startup. However, I'd normally recommend at least five minutes of operation before expecting to do any monitoring. So to enter the menus, you press the mode and no button simultaneously. So holding those two buttons together, will then be asked for a password. The password as standard is set to zero, 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 zero. And this is going. Now our first option is a calibration. So to start the calibration function, select, and we get an option for either a zero calibration or a span calibration. So to start off with, we'll do a zero, press select. This will then say to apply zero gas. All the units are supplied with a carbon filter. Um, this will make sure you get a nice clean POC sample. But in our case, I know I've got nothing in the atmosphere, so we'll press start and then it will take a 30 second zero. So that zero reading has now been successful. So we've set our point one of our two point calibration. We then get an option to span calibrate the device. So for our purposes here, I'm going to use a can of isobutylene with an on-demand regulator. So if we place that over the unit, we can remove the hydrophobic filter from the top of the instrument. And then if we select span calibration, it'll ask us to apply the gas. In this case, I'm using 100 ppm of isobutylene. Uh, if we were using a PPB ready instrument, we'd normally be calibrating at 10 parts per million of isobutylene. In this case, I don't want to change that calibration setting. I want to calibrate at 100 ppm. So we hit no. It will then say, please apply, please apply gas one. So I'm using an on-demand regulator. So this will automatically register the instrument and then does a 30 second calibration and we can see we were reading 102.1 parts per million. So that span has now been successful. Uh, I'm obviously in an alarm state because I'm still sharing gas, so remove the instrument, calibration, and that's all our two point calibration functions done. So to look at the menus in a bit more detail, I'll reapply the hydrophobic filter to the end of the instrument. Um, if we go back, we also get the option for measurement settings. So looking at things like our measurement gas, so if we select that, we can see from my existing list, my last 10 gases used, or the total gas library. So to skip into the gas library, this will show, um, means you can input any preset correction factors for any gases you may want to measure. And if I go back, we can also do some custom gas settings. So dependent on if you have a standard gas calibration mix, you may want to do a custom gas correction factor. If we just now go back, we can also look at our measurement units, be they parts per million or milligrams per cubic meter or micrograms per cubic meter. Tube selection, this is only available, this is a firmware from the Ultra A3000 instrument, which we'll look at in a bit more detail in a further video. So if I go into the alarm settings, I can look at things like my high alarm, I can change my low alarm settings, Stell alarm, TWA alarm, and our alarm mode, so be it an auto reset or a latching alarm. 
um, or I can look at the buzzer and the light settings, so whether we have a buzzer on its own or a light on its own. Um, in our data log settings, we can change things like clear the data log or change the interval period, uh, look at the data selection, so what sort of things we want to log, be it minimum averages, etc., Stells TWAs. Uh, our data log type, be it an automatic or a manual, so an automatic means it's uh, data logging from startup and manual means we select calibrate um, to data log and then we're back to where we started. Uh, back, our general monitor setup. This is mainly for operational things like um, the operation mode, be it search mode or hygiene mode. Uh, this basically stalls, uh, stops the pump and enables you to do some quick uh, measurement settings. Uh, site ID, user ID, user mode, so this could be different viewers or basic modes of operation, so we get things like graphs. Uh, date, time, pump duty cycle, so how heavily the pump is working, pump speed, uh, temperature units, language, real-time protocols, um, power on zero, so whether it does a zero at startup, uh, unit ID, LCD contrast, lamp ID, if we particularly want to put one in, pan ID, and uh, the pan ID is mainly for use with things like the uh, mesh guard system where we want to look at wireless options. So if we go back into the general instrument operation, uh, we've got a good idea of the menus now. You can see my direct reading levels of what we're seeing in the atmosphere here at the moment. Um, we can do an alarm chest. Um, we can um, look at any TWAs and stale values. We can look at time at date settings and temperature settings what particular calibration gas we're set for at the moment, our measurement gas, our calibration gas, and to PC communications. So if you want to communicate with the PC via the um, either the travel charger or the stand-up desktop charger, you can enter PC communication and stop the measurement. This is also where we would uh, get into the auto RAID 2 functionality as well. And then we're back to where we started. Turn the instrument on, it's a simple five second countdown. And the unit is now in an off position. Lamp cleaning is going to be something that's needed to be done frequently. So in order to clean the lamp on the instrument, we need to unscrew the top section here. This will simply unscrew. This section comes off. You can see there is a additional level of filtration in there. Um, we can remove the sensor block from the top of the instrument and we can then see the lamp is now exposed. It's important not to touch the surface of the lamp but use the uh, cleaning solution that's been provided by Ray Systems. And then we want to reattach the sensor block, again making sure we don't touch the sensor block at the top here. We can replace the sensor block section, clips back into position and then reattach the probe. And uh, that gives us a full, full synopsis of the Mini Ray 3000 series from Ray Systems. Alternatively, you can go and visit our website at www.safetymonitors.co.uk or do give us a call on 01489 890 458 between 9 and 5 Monday to Friday or outside of normal working hours, please do give us a call on 07951 854 824. We're here when you need us, and we understand that the normal 9 to 5 day doesn't always apply. So please do feel free to give us a call. Thanks for visiting, and we hope to see you again soon.